And well, we have FSR 1, FSR 2, FSR 3, FSR 3.1, which is a real upscaling update. And now we have FSR 4, kind of teased and kind of confirmed as well as being finally AI. Now, are these rumors not really because they were, this was stated by the vice president of AMD called Jack Huynh, which is actually a great name for a vice president. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let's just read a bit about these news um, on video cards, which are translated from a, a conversation that someone from Tom's Hardware actually had with AMD's vice president. And for today's sponsor, GVG Mall. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. According to Tom's Hardware, AMD is planning to use artificial intelligence in its next generation upscaling and frame generation technology, known as FSR. The technology, referred to as FidelityFX Super Resolution or FSR4 for short, is said to be fully AI-based. Jack Huen, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Computing and General Business Group of at, at AMD, I'm even stuttering now, <laughs> revealed several important details about the future of Radeon GPUs and technology during a Q&A, questions and answers, if you guys don't know, <laughs> at IFA 2024 with a limited number of press. Huynh confirmed that AMD FSR4 will use AI algorithms more extensively. The AMD Radeon team has shifted its focus to AI rather than simple filters, which is basically how the, the current FSR works. That's why it is software-based and not using AI. They, of course, they use machine learning to some extent to actually make the algorithm, but it's like he said, it's just basically filtering. So yeah. Yeah, which previously allowed AMD to quickly deploy their open source alternative to AMD DLSS technology. And now, of course, it is also worth noting that it still took nearly a year for AMD to launch FSR 3 after its initial showcase, which was actually true, but that's because AMD FSR 3 is basically just frame generation. So it was the first time that AMD was doing frame generation. It's normal that, that the beginning takes more time than the, than the updating, I mean, that's that's common sense, or at least that's usually how it goes. Uh, but yeah, so FSR 3.1 was the real upscaling uh, upgrade. So yeah, and that took a little less. AMD FSR technology, spatial upscaling, FSR 2.0 temporal upscaling, although once again, it's all about filtering, uh, motion vectors and so on. But yeah, FSR 3.0, temporal upscaling and optional frame generation. Of course, that's what I said. It's basically the same FSR 2.2 plus frame generation. And then we have FSR 3.1, which is the improved upscaling quality. And now with the coupled frame generation, meaning that you can use frame generation with any kind of upscaling or no upscaling at all. And then we have FSR 4.0, which is an AI-based upscaling and AI-based end frame generation, of course. So basically, uh, like NVIDIA and Intel are doing right now, Intel does that on the XMX version with the Intel Arc CPUs, that's why the XMX version is a bit better than the DP4A, which is the, ones, the one that we can use with AMD cards and so on, and NVIDIA cards, because it uses AI on their Intel Arc GPUs, and, and the same applies to DLSS, also uses AI and so on. On. And this comes to be more or less like people were telling that FSR 4 would most likely come alongside RDNA 4. RDNA 4, FSR 4, they've been working on FSR 4 for quite some time. And in terms of marketing, it is actually quite good. RDNA 4 and FSR 4. And since RDNA 4, sorry, actually focus more on ray tracing and maybe they will improve the AI cores on the GPU as well because the RDNA 3 GPUs RX 7000 also bring AI cores. Maybe, maybe that's it, I don't really know. Now, an important detail is that FSR 4.0 wasn't just a term coined by Tom's hardware, it was actually mentioned by Huen during the press event. 
It is not a name that somebody just invented. It was AMD's vice president that called it that, FSR 4.0. When discussing next-gen upscaling, the AMD vice president specifically highlighted that FSR 4 would focus on improving battery life and enabling gamers to lock frame rates to 30 or 35 FPS on gaming handles, which is one of the biggest markets to come, especially that now that they have the Z1, Z1 Extreme, and they'll release the Z2. Intel is also going strong on the hand on the handheld devices and so on and this suggests that he was likely referring more to the upscaling than the frame generation as the letter as the letter sorry typically becomes relevant at a base frame rate of 45 60 and i mean 45 is really really big stretch it needs to be a very very good frame generation technique to work well with only 45 fps base and if we're talking about you having 45 fps it means that after the um, after the the cost of frame generation it's like 40 or even below that that the algorithm has to work with so it yeah 60 minimum for me but anyways on the handheld side my number one priority is battery life if you look at the asus rog ally or the lenovo legion go it's just that the battery life is not there I need multiple hours, I need to play Wukong for 3 hours, not 60 minutes. This is where frame generation and interpolation come in. So this is the FSR 4 that we're adding. And although video cards and Tom's hardware seem to focus more somehow on the upscaling part, it seems that here they are more focusing on the frame generation technique, now going AI as well, in order to most likely or possibly have way lower latency, way lower artifacts and bring much, much higher visual, visual fidelity at a much lower cost. And I believe that's what they're aiming to or what they're aiming for. Because FSR 2 and FSR 3 were analytical-based generation, so uh, yeah, an algorithm, not, uh, not AI-based, software-based, it was filter-based as well. Now, we did that because we wanted something with a very fast time to the market, very fast time, like over one year, but anyway. And what I told the team was, guys, that's not where the future is going. So we completely pivoted the team about 9, 12 months ago to go AI-based. This means that they are actually working at least, at least uh, on FSR 4 for at least 9 months. And if they, if they are working on FSR 4 for 9 months, it means that it will most likely be ready for the release of RDNA 4. So once again, RDNA 4 with FSR 4, that will that would be very, very nice. Now, will games really adopt FSR 4 really quickly? Will we be able to actually upgrade from, uh, from FSR 3.1 games with a DLL file to FSR 4, like Nvidia does and like Intel does, since we now have the FSR 3.1 implementation that really makes the developers have that DLL file in order for us users to upgrade later? That would be great. And I believe that AMD was already thinking about that when they made uh, the, the same thing that uh, Intel and Nvidia was doing. If it is going to be really, really much better and work especially, especially well with AI GPUs or maybe CPUs with NPUs as well, then, uh, then yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense to have that file upgradable to the latest version, at least for the GPUs that support it, of course. Now we're going AI-based frame generation, frame interpolation, and the idea is increased efficiency to maximize battery life. Once again, it seems that Jack Quinn is actually focusing a lot on the on battery life and handhelds, but of course it will come to the desktop side as well. And then we could lock the frames per second, maybe it's 30 frames per second or 35. My number one goal right now is to maximize battery life. Once again, I think that's the biggest complaint. I read the returns too from the retailer where people want to be able to play these games, okay? Jack, Win, AMD via Tom's hardware. As for Huin's recent comments, who also confirmed RDNA and CD CDNA are becoming UNDA, we had GCN before, which, which was Graphics Compute Next or something like that, uh, which uh, was an architecture that we had with Vega till the Vega, the Vega Arc, and then AMD kind of divided the gaming and the computing side um, in two divisions in order to make it work better, but well, it seems that it didn't result that well, and now they are combining it again after RDNA 5. So we're gonna have RDNA 4 now, then RDNA 5, and supposedly RDNA 5 will be the last 
RDNA. And after that, we will have UDNA. And once again, it was AMD's vice president that told us that. So it is almost certainly true. Kraken APUs will be released in 2025, or the fact that AMD has the prioritized high-end GPU segment for now. Another important thing that people watching this channel were complaining about, oh, AMD is not making high-end GPUs anymore. No, they didn't say that. They said that they now are not making high-end GPUs. Of course, they will make high-end GPUs in the in the future. That's basic. They did exactly the same with the, with the RX 5000 series. They only did the low and mid tier, and it sold pretty well. It sold pretty well because it was a tremendous price performance card. It still is nowadays if you buy it used. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's 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 what they're doing right now with RDNA 4. They are maybe. Pulling, uh, pulling some money, some R and D from the from the RDNA four architecture and putting it on RDNA five to make sure that RDNA five will be much better, and that's actually a good thing. That's actually a good thing because what we need right now in the market is not super mega hyper faster GPUs right now, especially that we are now aiming for frame generation and upscaling more and more. What we need right now is a very very good. Um, set of GPUs in terms of price performance. We need those price performance GPUs now. And I guess that AMD will deliver that soon. Sorry about this. And this would no doubt make an interesting official presentation wasn't sadly discussed outside of a small circle of journalists. Yeah, AMD needs to improve its marketing efforts, especially for Radeon GPUs, which have often been limited to PDF documents and blo blog posts. Yeah, which is actually true. It was AMD's vice president and th that told us this, so it's gonna happen. Like 99% sure it's gonna happen. It is very good in terms of marketing FSR4, RDNA4. RDNA4 RDNA is supposedly focusing more and more on AI and also ray tracing performance. So it will be a very, very good thing to have, okay? You have this awesome price performance card, maybe a card that performs very close to the XTX in terms of in terms of, of rasterization is better in terms of ray tracing, considerably better and consumes way less power. So it's a win-win situation in all scenarios and costs you like 600 bucks or even less than that since they are now going for monolithic dyes once again. I mean, yeah, it has less VRAM and so on, but but on the other side, it's much cheaper and better on retracing and it will have AI core, so FSR4 will be working natively on it. And according to some leaks that we had before, it seems that RDNA is already kind of ready uh, and maybe, maybe they're waiting for the for the FSR4 implementation. And by the way, it was said more than one time that Sony and AMD kind of developed together both FSR4 and PS um, PlayStation, how they call it, PlayStation PSSR, PSSR, yeah, PSSR, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution or something like that. So that's insane. It seems like a disease or something. Oh, I just got a PSSR yesterday. I'm so mad. Uh, I believe that PSSR and FSR4 might be very, very similar. And I believe that the first games to have FSR4 will be Sony One since the technology was developed like together. So yeah. Maybe, maybe not. These are just speculations, but what are not speculations are that we're gonna have FSR 4 and it is now finally, finally AI based. Maybe we'll see FSR 4 really, really close to the LSS in terms of, of upscaling quality and, uh, and frame generation, maybe even better in terms of frame generation. That would be awesome really, because once again, AMD usually brings things that are open source, which usually lead to many, many more things. But yeah, many mods, many things that we can do with that software. So that's great. But yeah, let's see what we get. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Really short video just showing you the, the news that we have here. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these news, if you think they are relevant. If not, if AMD's vice president is on drugs or something like that, if he really means what he says, if they are coming just for handhelds first, uh, if they are prioritizing um, maybe efficiency in terms of uh, comparing to quality, visual quality, since frame generation also needs to be improved in terms of visual quality. If they are aiming at 30, 35 FPS, they need to improve the algorithm a lot because anything that's using from 30 to 60 nowadays, it just sucks. We have lots of motion artifacts, uh, lots of ghosting. I mean, it's just not 
not pretty. Um, so if they are aiming for, for 30, 35 FPS, it means that they are bringing some really interesting things. But once again, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about this topic. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. By the way, the next video will most likely be benchmarks or something like that. Cheers.